Hi, this is Matt Bronco Finnerty, and I am in New York Presbyterian Hospital, about to undergo open heart surgery, and I am watching rugby wrap up. to you by our friends of the British Council. And now, ladies and gentlemen, your women's Premier League national champions, the New York Rugby Club. They are, folks, the national champion, <laughs> New York Rugby Club, the WPL winners, and uh, they are giddy and, and downright tired from all the jet lag and travel. And, and let me introduce them real fast, as we as, as we're, we only have a minute, a minute of time of these people's lives. Uh, we have the captain, Tiffany Faye. There's a presentation uh, we have off the Talia trophy. Brody, the number eight. No, I don't be surprised. Who's all over the pitch. It's we have Kristen Ciano, the uh, fly half extraordinaire. Ciano. We sure. have Gio Cruz, the MVP of the tournament. Keep and we have Emily McGee, the, the winger, number 14 of the scrum cap. <laughs> we'll get to that, we'll get to that later. All right. all right, so ladies, first off, congratulations. Thank, Thank you so you much. You. Uh, you noticed the New York Rugby Club stuff all around the set because you your uh, fellow teammates of, of mine mm -hmm. on the club, uh, and it's always exciting when we win. <laughs> yes. All right. All right. So, Tiff, going to start with you. You're the veteran of the rugby wrap-up show here <laughs> in New York. You were a World Cup a star, and unfortunately, our, the Team USA came up short, but it was a great showing. Now you're here. Now you're a champion. Back after that performance, you followed up with this one, and we'll talk about why you were wearing number 12 later, but um, <laughs> what's it like? Um, I mean, honestly, uh, Alicia will probably vouch coming off the World Cup and not having that break. We thought, you know, OK, let's just suck it up because it's WPL and being the last four season as well, we were just going to get in there. And I think uh, coming back and the energy from the, you know, the tone that we set in the World Cup and just coming back to the girls and their training and everyone was so excited about that performance. It really, really ramped up, I don't know, the skill level, just the energy, every training from the first training I got to, as tired as I may have been, <laughs> it was motivating and inspiring seeing the girls that were you know, back home cheering for us and just feeding off that energy. So it was great. So in the back line, I'm noticing you two, and I'm like, if I'm on the other team, and I like specifically with the Glendale Merlins, and you're a 12, and you're a 10, mm -hmm. that's got to be an intimidation factor right from the get-go. Yeah, I mean, it was great to have Tiff right next to me, because I know that if I didn't have the energy to really crash into the ball, I can just give it to Tiff, and she'll just punish that 12. So you're the number eight there, right? And you got your blind side, wait, blind side? Fine. Blind side, and you've got a winger. When she's not in the front row how does that change your game i never actually played with tiff in the front row i've only played with her at being a back so for me it hasn't made much of a difference she just does her job and runs up the ball and hits those tackles amazing so you have a world-class front rower <laughs> playing in the back line which speaks to the depth and your coach james english was talking about that depth he said this was a championship one through 40 because you, you all keep each other competitive. Mm -hmm. You're all there for each other. You can step in. You can allow a Rugby World Cup front row to play in the back line. <laughs> yeah, we don't like, need it. You, know, so <laughs> you were the MVP of the championship. What was it like for you? Getting the MVP? Oh, the or whole just shebang. In general? Um, it was amazing. Um, I had never been to that like final, like the actual finals. Um, like championship moment. Um, I had always like gotten to like fourth or something or third, um, but getting there was like, we're here, we did it. And it was like, there's nothing left to lose. Like we just got to put it all out there and do the very best that we can. And it was just very exciting. 
I, I was watching you, and you had what were you doing with your hair that was different? Because I, as a bald guy, <laughs> as a bald guy, I'm jealous, and I noticed these things. But did you? You didn't have a scrub cap on, did you? No, 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 I braided my hair. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Usually I leave it out, but I was like, I'm gonna yeah, right to keep it king, composed. No, so we could talk hair. about rugby all day, but how long is the process to unbraid the hair? Oh my God, I actually did this morning. It was a while. <laughs> <laughs> so we thank you, but the, the, we like the braids too. Right, and, I, and I don't think the, the posing scrum half or fly half that you were punishing all game long really cared about what your hair was like. No. Yeah. They'll remember. Yeah. Uh, Emily, so you run down um, what would have been a try, I think, in the first half against oh, Glendale. Uh-huh. You had a race back. She had, she had, a, she had somebody outside mm-hmm. her. She didn't see it. And you waffled her. Um, yeah. That was nice. It was nice. I mean, I think I had, I had missed two of those kinds of tackles in the game against the surfer, so I was really sure that I was not going to do that same mistake again and, and get her. And luckily, um, she wound up like throwing the ball out of bounds, so that kind of worked out for me. <laughs> so the, the scrum cap. Oh, God, the scrum cap. <laughs> it's so ugly. I'm the first to admit that. Um, I am not the bravest of players and so I do my best to avoid contact which is kind of fitting because I'm on the wing but uh, the scrum cap is a bit You're of a band for here. me yeah let's be honest I mean it keeps my hair back but for the most part it hurts way less to get kneed in the head with the scrum cap on than it does otherwise okay alright so I, the, you have mentioned the match against the San Diego Surfers who were an excellent team they won last year's championship when did you play them like a week before or two weeks before because that was the, the semifinal no, it was actually the Friday before. Oh, you played them the same weekend. <laughs> we did. Another championship caliber match, and arguably that could have been, for a lot of people, the that final, could have been yep. the final. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, what the, what's, the, what's up with that? <laughs> I mean, we knew going into it, you know, we all, we all had our routines. We knew exactly what we needed to do to take care of our bodies, because that's just something that's out of our control, unfortunately. Um, yeah, and I, I asked a lot of the girls, I was like, there's no game on Sunday unless you put it all out there today. So, yeah, it's it's difficult, but it's something we're dealing with, and hopefully moving forward, you know, they can look into something like that to improve for our girls. And on that note, we'll be right back after this short break. Well, I'm a post... Uh, what did I get done? Open heart surgery. Open heart surgery. Yeah. And uh, I'm just dying to watch rugby wrap up. All right, everybody, how's it going? We sip, we peel, and we slide. Slide? Nah, like this. We sip, we peel, we wet. Good thing I'm getting this. Grab a large or extra large freshly ground, freshly brewed hot coffee for your chance to win great prizes, like free coffee for a year. Get your celebration ready. Dunkin' Donuts. This is coffee. This is winning. We're Nation Sports, and you're watching Rugby Wrap-Up. All right, now do it with a little arr. One, two, three. We're Nation Sports, and you're watching Rugby Wrap-Up. <laughs> what? Hey everybody, Matt McCarthy for Rugby Wrap-Up back here at the Fantasy Sports Network Studio 34 on West 35th Street in Manhattan with the champion, New York Rugby Club women. All right, and Kristen, back to you. You scored the first try to get the team back in. You guys were down 12-zip. You were also down 19-5 and won this exhilarating 27-26 match, which I was screaming at the TV. My <laughs> wife and my dog were what are you doing? Anyway, um, do you think that it benefited you guys? more to have the two games than the other two squads? Um, definitely. I, I think the first game against the surfers, everything just suddenly clicked for us. And I remember being super happy being on the field and everyone had smiles and it was just an incredible feeling of we are not going to lose any game that's ahead of us. And I think um, when we played against Glendale, we got scored on twice, but nobody had a doubt that we were you know, going to come up on top. And um, Scoring that first try was, I just saw the try and I was just like, okay, I'm going to be a forward right now, pick and go. Um, but it just, the whole team, you looked at everyone's face, everyone was smiling, everyone was ready, everyone was like, okay, yeah, they scored on us, so what? Um, I remember thinking the first score that they scored on us, looked up at the clock and there's like 20 minutes had gone by. Yeah. And it took them a while to yeah. score on us and I think that was just, we had that belief that it's okay, we'll play defense once we get the ball we're a threat and we're going to score and you could feel that they felt that as well one of the biggest uh fan reactions i heard from a rather raucous uh rug- new york rugby contingent was when you picked <laughs> off a pass and we're in the open i think it was you and it was blown back 
for I think playing the advantage for about an hour and a half. What was the call <laughs> there? Was that the right call? Um, I think there was a knock on a little bit earlier on. I don't remember who did it first. I think there was a knock on both ways and then there was advantage and they called it back and I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I did that to us a few times. So. Yeah, that's what I thought. Would you have scored? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so New York Sevens. Are we going to win it? We're going to take it home? It two championships? Come on, why not? I mean, it's, uh, we've got a few teams. We, some of our girls are trialing for academies. Uh, they're using the tournament to get looked at, you know, to, um, for an opportunity to play for Northeast as well uh, to represent. So, yeah, we're going to have a, a – of course, we're going to have a New York side in the elite. We're just going to take it one game at a time well, and listen, see how we go. Well, hold on a second. So if you, if, who's trying to – who wants to get in the Northeast Academy here? You, 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 you. Yeah. Listen, yeah. I make some phone calls. That's over. <laughs> just concentrate on winning the tournament. Well, we actually – so New York 7s, we finished uh, fifth last year. Sorry, as the – in the summer season, we finished fifth uh, at nationals, and I was talking to Kristen and to Tali right after, and I was like, "Listen, we just won WPL. Like next year, we're gonna win sevens. <laughs> we're just gonna bring it to the like back to the club twice." Yep. yep. All right. Well, ladies, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, you brought a little bit more class uh, to this set, and um, I am very proud to call you club members. Thank you very Go much. Go to your rugby club on behalf Thanks for of these. Us. You're welcome. On behalf of these great ladies, Matt McCarthy here for rugby wrap up. At Studio 34, the Fantasy Sports Network on West 35th Street in New York City. Go to your rugby! I'll tell you what, uh, my name is Matt Bronco Finnerty, and uh, I just had open heart surgery. I'm learning how to walk again. Um, however, I am looking forward to watching rugby wrap up.